A major figure in the Bay Area sports world is facing some serious accusations tonight. The former San Francisco 49er great Dana Stubblefield has been slapped with a restraining order by his former fiance. She is speaking with the ABC 7 News I team. And Dan Noyes is here with uh, Dan, a story that up until now has been a private ordeal. Oh, that's right, Dan. You know that Dana Stubblefield got snagged in the Balco case for lying to federal investigators about his steroid use. If proven to be true, these new accusations could send him to prison as a violation of his probation. Dana Stubblefield was a defensive star for the 49ers. Sack Stubblefield. After helping the team win a Super Bowl and becoming the NFL's defensive player of the year. You just don't expect a guy 300 pounds to be that nimble. He scored a six-year, $36 million contract with the Washington Redskins and landed a role in the Hollywood film opposite Ben Affleck. Stubblefield finished his career back in the Bay Area with the Niners and Raiders and settled in San Jose. His retirement has been anything but quiet. I'm very scared of this guy. And, and that's, that's my main reason for coming to you guys and for writing that letter. 26-year-old Melanie Wade contacted the I-team because she's worried the authorities aren't doing enough to protect her from Stubblefield. After a tumultuous three years together, Wade broke up with him last month, four days before their wedding. She says she tried to leave several times. He would lock me in and not let, let me leave the house and tell me uh, threats, like, I'm not done with you till you're six feet under. Like, yeah, I'm the only man you're going to be with. Wade says the relationship began to unravel after Stubblefield admitted lying about his steroid use to federal investigators in the Balco case. Stubblefield received a reduced sentence of two years probation and a $5,000 fine because he cooperated with investigators, providing the names of players, trainers, and others associated with the NFL who may be involved in ongoing activities with illegal drugs in professional football. At a sentencing in February, Melanie Wade was by his side. It was hard for him. He, he was depressed about it. It was hard for him uh, to leave his house when he had to admit that. It also was apparently hard for Stubblefield when Wade left him for good. In her application for a restraining order that was approved by a Santa Clara County family court judge in August, Wade says Stubblefield would call 50 times a day or more, sometimes leaving long, rambling messages. I know you're an angel, and I know you're here for me and in, in my life for a good reason. In court documents, Wade describes a dangerous confrontation. He was running me off the road. It was almost like a horror movie. Wade left her work as a personal trainer at about 11 o'clock one night last year, and Stubblefield was waiting for her. I was on my bicycle, and I told him to leave, leave me alone. And he, he was really irate. He wasn't leaving, so he followed me home. She turned down a darkened road trying to escape, but Stubblefield followed in his jacked-up Chevy Suburban. And he bumped me off of my bike, and I went forward, and I got cut up in bruises and um, got back on my bike and, and continued to go home. When she finally got back to her apartment, Wade says Stubblefield was already there. And so I got this big rock and threw it at the truck, and I ran into my apartment, and he just waited out there like a shark in the water. And then there was a big pounding on the door. Melanie Wade's mother told San Jose police she personally witnessed the threats when Stubblefield came looking for Melanie one night three months ago. And I told him he, she wasn't there, and then he said that he has someone that is going to go after Melanie and for Melanie to watch her back. The I-team called Dana Stubblefield several times for comment. At one point, he said he would speak with his attorney and call back, but didn't. So we caught up to him at Kizar Stadium a week ago, where he was coaching the varsity defense for San Jose's Valley Christian High School. We were careful not to raise these sensitive issues in front of his players. I got to talk to you about the story. Will you talk to us? Uh, not before high school. Uh, no. Come on, at the end or in the middle? When? Later, he told us to speak with his criminal defense attorney. I'm a lawyer, Dan Nicholson. Dan Nicholson did not return our calls for an interview, but yesterday he sent an email saying, we deny the allegations contained in the restraining order request, but in the interests of privacy and closure, we decline to make a statement. Stubblefield and his lawyer have not addressed another serious accusation contained in a police report and noted in Melanie's journal. No, it's a listing of, like, the day I went to the post office and saw my mail was being stolen. 
and the day of the police report of the forgery and the stolen mail. Wade says Stubblefield went to the post office, forged her signature on a change of address form, and had her mail forwarded to his house, including her paychecks, phone bills, and bank statements. All of my accounts, every single one, he went online and he logged in like it's me and he created passwords so I couldn't even get into my accounts online. If you're changing someone else's mailing address to come to your house and they haven't approved it and that's not their mailing address, then you're submitting a false document to postal officials. It's potentially a federal crime. The I-team has confirmed that U.S. Postal Service investigators are looking into Wade's complaint. Melanie remains afraid for herself, but also for the students Dana Stubblefield comes in contact with at Valley Christian High School male and female. And I feel like those kids are at risk because they spend so much time with this animal. Um, animal? I really feel like he's an animal. I mean, he just, he loses it. He has no sense of right and wrong. He just, he, he rages. He sees red. What do you want now? What do you want? Just peace and quiet. I just want to be left alone. I just want this all to be over with. Melanie Wade is getting help from the Crime Victims Program to relocate to a new home where she hopes Dana Stubblefield can't find her. They're both scheduled to appear in family court next week as Wade tries to extend the restraining order to five years. Now, the other question, Valley Christian High School stood behind Stubblefield during his problems with Balco. We'll see how they respond to this latest controversy. Dan. All right. You'll follow up, obviously. Yes, we will. Dan, thanks very sure. much.